Hello, welcome to another Research Methods for the Biosciences screencast for SPSS. This screencast covers section 11.1, .1, the Man Whitley U test, and section 11.2, Wilcoxon's signed ranks test for matched pairs. These are non parametric tests that evaluate the hypothesis that two samples come from the same statistical population. The Man Whitley U test is performed on samples where the data is independent. In this case, we are looking at the height of two samples of periwinkle distinguished by their position on the shore. No periwinkle is measured more than once. The data can be found in Table 11.1. .1. The Wilcoxon Sign Ranks test for matched pairs is performed on two samples where the same individual is measured twice under different conditions. In this case, our data concerns self-assessed enjoyment of chocolate at two times of the day. Each individual is measured twice, with their self-assessed enjoyment rating of chocolate at 7am included in the data for the first sample, and their rating from 6pm included in data for the second sample. This type of data is said to be matched or paired. This data can be found in Table 11.2. I have already entered the data from Table 11.1 .1 into SPSS. In Column 1 we have the height of each periwinkle, and in Column 2 we have the location at which that periwinkle was found. You can see from the location column, I've expressed the lower shore as the value 1 and the mid shore as the value 2. SPSS finds it very convenient to have numbers expressed in the locations, but it's not so good for humans to understand. One of the things we can do is give data labels to these numbers. If we go down to variable view, you can see the data labels that I have already entered. I'm going up to location and values and I'm going to click we can see that I've instructed SPSS to use the number 1 and associate it with the term lower shore and the number 2 and associate it with the term mid shore. For more information on how to do this, follow the web walkthrough or look at my introduction to SPSS screencast. I'm going to press OK, go back to data view. Now, if I press this symbol up here, we can get SPSS to actually display the label rather than the number. You can also do this by going to view and down to value labels. So let's do the test. We're going to go to analyze, down to non-parametric tests. You can see a sub-menu opens. I'm going down to a legacy dialogues and then down to independent samples and click. A box opens. The Man Whitley U test button is already ticked. I just now need to tell it the variables we're going to use. The test variable is the height. So I need to click on height and select it using the arrow. The grouping variable, the variable that tells SPSS which periwinkles were found on the lower shore and which on the mid shore, is location and select it using the arrow. I now need to tell SPSS which groups we're going to use. So I'm going to click define groups. The first group was group 1, which was the lower shore. The second group was group 2, which was the mid shore. I now press continue. I'm now ready to OK and run the test. As we can see, a data window opens. The value for the Man Whitley U is 62.5, and the significance, as given by the ASIM SIG, two tailed, is 0 0.258. So, what is the meaning of the p value? A p value of 1 means we can accept the null hypothesis as true, whereas a p value of 0 means we can accept the null hypothesis as untrue. As we travel from a p value of 1 to 0, the transition point between true and untrue is set at 0.05 in the biological sciences. The smaller the p-value below 0.05, the more confident we can be in rejecting the null hypothesis. A p-value of 0.258 is larger than 0.05, so we do not reject the null hypothesis. And our conclusion is that there is no difference between the median shell height in millimetres of periwinkles from the mid and lower shores. The Wilcox and Sign rank test for matched pairs is done in a similar manner. I've entered the data from table 11.2 into SPSS in two columns. SPSS knows which two samples came from which individual because they're in the same row. To perform the test, go up to Analyze and click, down to Non-Parametric Test, a sub-menu appears, down to Legacy Docs, and then down to Two Related Samples and click. You can see that the Wilcoxon square is already ticked. I just need to tell SPSS which variables to use. I'm going to click in the Variable 1 box, select the Enjoyment at 7am, and Enter. It's now asking me for variable 2, which is the enjoyment at 6pm, and I'm going to 
enter that. I can now press OK. The first box shows us that the sum of ranks is 4.0, but we're really interested in the asymptote significance, a two-tailed test, which is equal to 0 0.050. Asymptote simply means that SPSS is assuming that your sample size is adequate. This figure of 0 0.050 which is equal to the generally accepted boundary between significance and non-significance, and therefore we cannot reject the null hypothesis, and thus can conclude there is no significant difference between the median chocolate enjoyment ratings at 7am compared to 6pm. I hope you found this screencast helpful. For further information on how to use this test, or the theory behind it, then please consult the book. More information on how to use the program to perform the test can be found in our online web guides located in the Resource Centre. Thank you for listening.